Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a radical equation. We have x plus square root of x equals 1, and we're going to evaluate numerically x plus 1 over x. So based on the values that we get from the first equation, we're going to evaluate the second expression, which you can also call an equation, I guess, if you said it equal to something. But we don't know what it is equal to. Great, so let's go ahead and check it out. And we can solve this problem in more than one way. That's something that I always emphasize. I know some people are like, you can do this in 30 seconds. That's not the point. First of all, it's going to take a while to explain to people because we're not trying to show off here or uh, just, you know, hopefully you learn something from this. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's start with the first method. My first method involves isolating the radical. And you don't have to do it that way. I can also show you an alternative. But if you isolate square root of x, from here you're going to get 1 minus x. Now, why is it important? Because we're going to square both sides. When we do, we get rid of the radical, which is important, because notice in the expression that we are trying to evaluate, there are no radicals. So we want to get a polynomial or something like that. Okay? If you square this, you get x. If you square that, I usually do the a squared, b squared first. So it's 1 plus x squared and then minus 2x. Now, you can do a couple things here. For example, you can put everything on the same side, right? x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0, and then solve this equation, okay? How do you solve it? Easy. This is not factorable. It's still easy, though, because it's quadratic. You can go ahead and use the formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4. You see, that's 9 minus 4, which is 5, divided by 2. Hopefully, you know the quadratic formula. If not, look it up and always ask questions, that's the best way to learn. If you like complex numbers or you wanna learn more about them, I have another channel called A plus BI, which makes sense, right? Great, so let's go ahead and see what we can do with that because we have two values, so it's kind of like a du dual valued. How do you deal with that, right? Because we're trying to evaluate something from here, so which one are you gonna use? That's a million dollar question, actually a very easy question to answer. It doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter. Because of the way question is asked, you can pick anything you want. So let's suppose that x is equal to 3 minus root 5 over 2 and evaluate this expression. So we're going to get this and it's reciprocal. So we're basically adding two reciprocals, right? And then um, the second expression or the second term requires the multiplication by conjugates. You know, if you have two radicals that are conjugates, their product is determined by difference of two squares. With the complex numbers, it is sum of two squares, like a plus bi and a minus bi. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my channel and also check out the lecture videos. And always, always ask questions. That's the best way to learn. The best way to learn. So if you go ahead and multiply across, you get two times and don't distribute because something is going to cancel out. These two will give you 9 minus 5, which is 4. And as I said earlier, 2 goes into 4 twice. And now we have a common denominator, which is important, because you, could, you can just add the numerators, which makes things a little easier. And notice that this root 5 cancels out, leaving us with 6 divided by 2. I hope you know this. The answer is 3. Aha, rocket science, right? Great. So here's an alternative uh, to uh, dealing with this problem. So we had x plus square root of x equals 1, right? You could also do this. Just set square root of x equal to t or any other variable of your choice. I like t. A um, little bit of coffee maybe once a week. And then this will become t squared. This will become t. And this will become a quadratic again. But this time it's different because x and t are different, right? x is t squared from here. So if you solve this equation, you're going to get the t values. And then from there, you need to find the x values. And then you can plug them in. Like just what we did here, right? It's exact same thing. And you should get the same thing. One of the cool, coolest things about using multiple methods is the challenge is getting the same answer. And that happened to me before, trust me. Like when I was trying to solve a problem. And that happened in probably one of my videos, maybe more videos before that I got two different solutions. And then I realized, uh-oh, there's something wrong with this. And I, sometimes I don't even finish with an explanation. And usually my viewers, which are obviously great people, uh, they'll figure it out. And somebody will write in the comment section uh, anyways. 
So that happens too. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. I think the second method is really cool, but again, that's me and I could be biased. So you're gonna get to decide uh, which method you like better. So we start with the original problem again, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Isolate square root of x and square both sides. So far, so good, right? I mean, we're doing the same thing, so it should be familiar to you. x equals one plus x squared minus two x. Now, this is, it's at this point that we kind of diverge, okay? And again, we can kind of branch off into two uh, different methods here, maybe 2a and 2b. Yeah, I was able to say that, 2b or not 2b. All right, that's the problem. So one way I can just go ahead and isolate x squared. That'll give me 3x minus 1. And let me tell you why I did that. Because the expression I'm trying to evaluate is based upon the x value that I'm finding. But I can actually do this problem, which is the coolest part, without solving for x value. Because they didn't ask you to solve for x. They ask you to find, I mean, I ask you in this case, I guess. But this problem was taken from who knows where. The idea is, can you do it without solving? It should be possible, right? That's why we have the second method. So the reason why we isolate the x squared is uh, for a good reason, because when in this expression, if you make a common denominator, you get something like this. So in this case, it makes sense to replace x squared with something. Again, we're not going for numerical solutions. We're kind of looking for a replacement uh, in writing. And this is done a lot with polynomials. If you look at the previous problems on my channel, on polynomials particularly, you're going to see a bunch of problems that uses this idea, some problems that has to do with golden ratio, and this problem also has something to do with golden ratio, if you can discover it. But anyways, that's a different topic. But here, to keep a long story short, I know I usually keep short stories long, people complain about it, uh, we're going to replace x squared with 3x minus 1 here, and then the rest uh, is the same. Well, let me just show you a different color. And notice that the negative 1 and the positive one cancel out, leaving us with 3x over x. And of course, we know that x is not 0. Otherwise, this will be 0 over 0. And this is equal to 3. Beautiful. We got the same solution. Yay, Houston. We got a success. OK, great. So here's a different way to continue. Like, in other words, the, let's say if this is the 2a, then this is going to be the 2b. OK? So we solve this equation again one more time. And we get x squared plus something, right? So here, here is how you can take a look at it. Well, start with this, okay? And then just add one to both sides. In this case, we're not isolating x squared, we're isolating the three x. And then what we're gonna do next is, hopefully will be mind blowing, divide both sides by x, ta-da. Why would you do that, right? Some people are gonna question, I know. There was one viewer that I have, I, I don't know if he's still watching my videos, and I'm not gonna name his name because that would be kind of like a shaming him. But I was asked, like, how on earth did you come up with this? How did you figure this out? I mean, through practice. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you solve problems? By solving problems and not giving up. Keep solving problems. Ask questions. Make sure you solve harder problems when you can solve the easier ones. And that's how you learn. There's no magic bullet. There are some books, yes, you can use, but just for solving problems. Maybe some explanations, solutions might help too. But anyways... So this could be split up into x plus 1 over x, which is amazing, right? Ta-da! We get the solution right away. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.